Hi guys, so since the beginning of Brexit we have seen how the government will not help industries affected and instead hope that they will find ways around the problem or simply just close their operations. Brexit will remain untouched as a culprit while Boris Johnson remains in power. That may change but it will be difficult for any successor to unshackle the party from the idea that leaving the EU was a good idea. Here Simon Clark suggested that airlines will get round the problem of having fewer staff by having fewer flights. This will mask the problem and the Tories will of course claim that Brexit is succeeding. Um, talk to me about airport chaos because it is absolutely chaotic at the moment at many of our airports. Is Brexit to blame? No, I think what we're seeing here is the result of the airline industry having obviously massively contracted during the pandemic and now it's facing this surge of pent-up demand as things stand back up. And uh, truth be told, it isn't uh, resourced and manned for that challenge. That's why I think it is sensible that what we're starting to see now is some of the airports revising their schedules for the summer season ahead. Because, Frank, when he says revising the schedules, what he mean what he means is reducing the number of flights because the airlines cannot deal with the numbers that are coming in. Now, yes, to a certain extent, he's correct that there is pent up demand. There, the airlines and the airports laid off a lot of staff during the pandemic and they're struggling to get those back. But while European countries, members of the European Union are, are also in a difficult situation, but they are able to access workers from different countries, the UK is in a difficult spot because it can't access those workers. Now, remember that Brexit was supposed to help with this type of problem because it would have access to highly skilled labor. Um, the visa system was supposed to help bring in workers that were necessary, but that's obviously not working. Frankly, we can't have a repeat of the scenes that we've been having at some of our airports over recent, uh, recent weeks. And I know the Transport Secretary and Ministers there have been working very closely with the airline industry to try and get it into a, a more sensible place because they are, at the moment, offering flights they simply can't honour, and that is that is terrible for passengers. Absolutely mental at some of these airports at the moment. Um, I mean, the chief exec of Ryanair says uh, is blaming the chaos on inflexible post-Brexit labour market, and the CEO of Wizz Air saying the UK's post-Brexit immigration policy is putting a lot of strain on the labour market. So they say it's Brexit. Well, they, they, I mean, ultimately, I think the British people made their views very clear on un, you know, unlimited immigration from the EU. But what do you mean unlimited immigration from the EU? There was no unlimited immigration. But even if there was unlimited, which, is, which isn't the case, even if there was unlimited immigration, that immigration was necessary. That's why you're seeing these problems today. And it's not just in airlines, it's in farming, in manufacturing, in hospitality, in, in, in healthcare. There's a shortage of workers, workers that were that left during the pandemic so, and some could not return and some that were told, get out, we don't want you here anymore. Uh, and, and, there, and there were, there were very good reasons why we, we voted to have a controlled immigration policy. Is this the result? This, this, but I, but I, do not, I do not accept that this is, this is simply a direct pasture effect from Brexit. What I would say is this is the result of an industry which massively slimmed down, and understandably so, at a time when uh, flying was well nigh impossible for a year and a half, two years. It's now massively expanded its operations and the pressure is enormous and it hasn't managed to align the two. We will do our part as government to try and make sure that our side of things is right, from issues like passports to uh, well, border control. Where, where, and obviously, well, we're pouring resource into this and we're making sure that the whole processes are as robust as they can be. But in turn, the airlines, the airlines, but the airlines need to do their part of uh, part of things and that make sure that the flights that they're actually offering can indeed be honoured. And that's that's the key thing. So what is the solution to all of this? Well, the solution is as we saw at the beginning of Brexit, let business sort it out. We've created these obstacles and business will have to find a workaround. And I talked about this before, for example, exporters were told by government departments, just set up in the EU. We're not gonna actually help you. We're not going to make it easier for you to get these workers. So you'll have to sort this out yourself. And you're going to see exactly the same with the airlines. The airlines are going to reduce the number of flights that they operate. 
um, which is difficult for many low cost airlines because they rely on huge volumes and very uh, small margins. So they're going to end up, some of them probably not operating because it's no longer cost effective. Um, and what's going to happen is these problems at the airports will be reduced because there'll be fewer people flying and there'll be fewer fl uh, flights operating. And then the, the Tories will turn around and the Brexiteers will turn around and say, see, Brexit was not the problem because these problems have gone away. They've gone away because the industry has had to find a workaround. Not a solution because of Brexit. The problem was caused by Brexit and the businesses are finding a way to resolve it. But not in a positive way, but by reducing choice, um, by increasing costs for the companies themselves when it's you know, setting up operations abroad. But this is not a benefit. This is not a positive thing for Britain. And this is going to be part and parcel of Brexit in the future. As I said at the beginning, unless Boris Johnson is removed, unless he's replaced by somebody a bit more pragmatic, things are going to get worse and worse and you're going to see more and more examples of this. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.